Hello, this is Dwight Norris of FishNetwork.com here on the Charles River, the upper Charles River at Waltham, Massachusetts. As you can see, I have my N95 protection and I'm out here and we're fishing. And today we're going to be talking about something special, so stay tuned. So, I just wanted to talk about one thing today, and that is what kind of lures do bass like? Now, that's not actually one thing. There's actually many things. Right in front of me, I have a whole load of all the type of lures that bass like. Oh, wait a minute. There's nobody around. Maybe I can take my mask off so you can hear me properly. But don't do this when people are around. You never know. So, that's one of the first things that bass like. The one thing that I told you that bass like the best. What is it? Well, it's a good old plastic worm. And I particularly like Berkeley Power Bait because they have added scent. Let's get a better look. Closer. Plastic worms have been known to catch bass for a very long time. They're one of the first bass lures. I mean, what does a bass want more than a juicy worm falling from the shoreline or somewhere in the shallows and wiggling around helplessly right into its mouth? It's delicious, it's full of protein, and it, frankly, it's just an easy meal. And fish love easy. They always like the thing that's wounded. They like the thing that doesn't move. They like the thing that doesn't chase. They're always hiding behind structure so you don't get caught in a current or have to worry about any other environmental things. They just want to sit there and eat. It's kind of like the fish in my aquarium. So, hey, go with those. There's many different colors, many different flavors, but we all know the Trident too. I do have other videos that talk about the more specifics of this, but we're going to keep it real quick today. Um, the next thing is crankbaits. Right here, I have a Bass Pro Shops cheap edition of crankbaits. You know, son and daughter went through Cheap Pal, three bucks. You know, let them grab a couple of baits. What's the problem? You'll get to use them later. But as you can see, crankbaits are for fishing a little deeper. But most people think that's the only way to use a crankbait. One of the really great ways to use baits, like these are actually knocking them onto, you know, hitting like structure underwater. And when a bait fish actually hits something like that, it's usually already wounded and that triggers the fish to know that's something wrong with it. And when you do hit something, you should pause for a second, and let it float up or either it's a suspended crankbait and sit there for a second. And that's when you know, oh, oh, that's gonna be an easy meal. I'm going after that. It's worth moving because I know I won't have to chase it for very long. So you wanna run your crankbaits, preferably a square bill, through all the structure you can. Hit stumps, hit logs, hit rocks, hit uh, submerged trees, anything. You may get hung. And if you, do, if you do get hung, that means you're doing it right. So don't be cheap. Unless you have a Bass Pro Shops nearby, you get one of these. So you don't have to worry about losing one every so often. So the next thing, spinnerbaits, a favorite of mine. Over the decades, I've used spinner baits just like these. This is a Strike King KVD uh, Midnight Special. I have a video on it. You can go down below or to my channel to, to see the details about it. It has a rattle. Well, not the rattle of the spinner. It has a rattle in it and that gives it a little bit of action. You could not, a minnow does make a sound. It's more like the sound of a crayfish actually. And you can add that as a trailer, a trailer, um, either a, a grub on the end of it to extend it, make it look bigger a more beefier bait, give it more nutrition, or a crawfish as well, and kind of work it on the, on the um, drop it to the bottom and kind of slow reel it along the bottom to sort of mimic a crayfish. Not many people know to use a spinnerbait as a crayfish lure, but it does work if you slow down. And if you've looked at all the different uh, videos and editorials about how to catch bigger bass or how to catch bass when it's cold or they just aren't biting. The recommendation from Bill Dance, Roland Martin, Hank Parker, Kevin Van Dam, Mike uh, Iconelli are all the same. The answer is slow down. And that's one of the things that fishermen just don't want to do. But if you want to catch fish with any of these lures I'm going to talk about today, that's what you got to do when it just ain't working so well. Now the next one is spinners. 
Well, spinners are something that are most known for catching trout or, or even salmon or something. But easily, it's easily, usually it's an inline spinner, which means that the spinner is in line with the lure. So it's this one solid piece of wire going through the spinner that goes around it, around, around, the, uh, around the wire, while the bait at the bottom is behind it with one or two treble hooks. So the fish are coming behind it, they grab it, you feel it, you pull, and the trouble gets them no problems. These are usually small lures unless you're going for big things like lake trout. But these have been fantastic for trouts in very shallow rivers. You just have to match the hatch with their colors. And for bass, there, there are, from Panther Martin, bass uh, sets. They're like the best bass spinners that you can get. And they're literally mimicking bait fish. And that's what you should be going for. Now there are some, there is some controversy with using a copper spinner versus a silver spinner is basically based on what you're kind of fish for you know a silver spinner for a minnow a gold spinner for a golden shiner just gotta think about what you're fishing with next up are ooh, well grubs I don't have one in front of me oh I'm wrong I have my green grub you know this bad boy if you've been watching this video for my videos on YouTube for any amount of time Grubs are like the number one lure. It's because they're, it's a worm. This is a short worm. And it wiggles and moves like a minnow underwater when a tail moves. Now I have mine with a spinner on top of it to make it look like a, a group of them. And it gets the attention with the flash and the movement and the sound. So, you know, I'm hitting many sensory um, inputs for the, the fish. And honestly, it's one of my, my favorite lures around here on the Charles River. It's small, it's, uh, it attracts attention, and basically it's, it's, um, it's good. I really love it. And you should try out grubs without the spinner. Without a spinner is great. I've caught, an, I've caught, an, <laughs> I've caught a crappie with just the jig head and the grub, working it really slowly, and they particularly like the white ones because they're going after, them, they're going after minnows, and that's what you want to get into. So another good thing I, I don't have is a buzz bait. It, has an inline spinner, but it's it's like a hook. The let's let's pretend this is where the bu the buzzer is. It inline spins here. There's an arm that goes like a an L shape, a, a C shape, and go, elongates and comes out here. And this is where your skirt is, and the hook comes back like this. So they're attacking from here, trying to get to the buzz bait, and they hit the skirt because they see that because that's the wounded fish. That's that slower fish. If you want to get away from the bad guy, you run faster. You only need to run as faster than the person next to you. <laughs> and then they lose and you win. So that's basically how a buzz bait works. It attracts a lot of attention. There's a lot of sound. Sorry, this is my coughing up above, so I'm covering my face. And it's pretty awesome for that. So next up is, wow, I can't find it, is the chatterbait. I have a chatterbait by, by Z-Man very popular around here and around a lot of places the black and blue is fantastic why well it pretty much mimics what's in the area there are crayfish in this river not many people know about that and for most crayfish you'll find them using two colors one is blue and the other is red the reason for that is the shell actually changes cover color over time and the black and blue is actually a more of a, a silhouette if you ever looked at something from uh, that's swimming below you in the water and it's darker there and it's kind of camouflaged from the dark side and black and blue kind of mimics the effects of a shadow. So they don't know exactly what, the, you know, what they're looking at, but they see the silhouette of it. They can make a decision that this is something that they want to, um, want to bite. It's always disturbing when you when you know you hear somebody coughing around you and it's coronavirus time so whoo stay uh stay protected next up is poppers poppers are another great top water action lure as you can see here it has two treble hooks one in the front one in the back it's tapered from front to back and also there's a like a circle in the middle it's a 
it's like a scoop. So when it, it, when you pull it in little jerks, it collects the water and sprays it out over the top. It collects it, it collects it through the bottom and sprays it out. So it makes a lot of uh, spray, a lot of noise, and sometimes they have rattles in them like this to make more noise. So that's what it's all about. They're trying to attack, attract attention from everything in the water, good and bad. So when it's a school of fish going around and you put a popper out there or or not yours will attract more attention than them also there's a uh, plastic lizards now lizards aren't really on top of everybody's list they don't really think about them when they're fishing but there's lizards everywhere but not as many as you see other like insects running around but as you've seen Pretty much anything that gets in the water, swims on top, and tries to get from one side of the uh, the body of water to the other, you are bait. Whether you're a lizard, whether you're a frog, or a worm, or a chipmunk, or even a rat. Sometimes even a duck. I've, I've seen duck lures. That's weird, but hey, if the fish is big enough, they're going to take you down. And I'm not going to buy any duck lures, because... You know, the odds are very low, at least around here. But the rest of those are good. On top of that, I have plastic crawfish. I'll just take it out. See here? These, these can be used as, uh, as trailers. On the next thing I was on top of that, which are jigs. Now, I don't see many people using these with a, a hook and a little like texas rig weight but you can do that it's not as, as popular as it used to be but maybe people should go back to that usually you'll find the jig and you'll find this attached to the back with the, the claws hanging backwards on on the, on the jig so the weights up here and the claws are in the back and you're working this slow through the weeds through the stumps through the rocks through the submerged tree any kind of structure you can find any kind of structure even a structure that's environmental like going from a very a very steep drop that goes from the shallows down to the deep and that's where a lot of fish hang out during the prey spawn because they need to go up to the spawning beds but they don't want to waste energy to get there so they're not going to take the long way that's like half a mile to get from the deep to the shallows they're going to find a really steep spot and hang out suspend it and then when it's time, they'll just take a short little trip to the top, kind of like going to your corner store instead of going to the big store that's 30 miles away. Easier is better, right? It's all about convenience. Uh, next up is jerk baits. Oh, I thought I had one of those back here, but I don't. But if you've seen a Rapala minnow before, I do have the Countdown 5 Rapala minnow. It's basically, uh, a tube or cylindrical shaped minnow, kind of like, uh, kind of like this stick bait that I'm gonna talk about later. But it has a lip on there, just like a, a small one. So it's not really for diving. What it's really made is, is to make a particular type of wobble that will mimic a minnow's movement. And there's ones that you can change that will actually mimic the wobble of a wounded fish, which is what they really want to do. But it's kind of hard. But the most uh important part of those is what type you get. There's a topwater kind, there's a suspension kind that suspends in the water at certain depths, and there's one that actually gradually falls. It actually falls at a countdown, like the one I have. Every, every, um, what is it? Every couple seconds, it drops a foot. So you have to watch that when you're in shallow water, and you let it sit there for a second, because you might find yourself on the bottom. Sorry, my glasses are fogging up because the air is escaping. Excuse me.
Next up are spoons. So spoons are usually used for jigging in deep water. You'll find this somewhere used up north for like lake trout, musky, uh, walleye, things like that. I don't really use these a lot, but during the winter, these would have been fantastic using in the deeper water of uh, in the lower Charles River, right next to the Charles River Esplanade. If I had a boat, that's like 30 to 50 feet, and the fish are suspended there over the over the winter. You'll find all the crappie, all the bass, all the catfish. Sometimes some stripers that are, are laid over, the holdover striper, which are called, and a lot of uh, huh, a lot of perch. There's yellow and white perch down there as well. And depending on the type you get, once again, just like the inline spinners, silver and gold, you'll catch different fish and you'll have to match the hatch, which is kind of hard. There's, a, there's painting designs for different colors. There's different, you know, like cuts you can make into them, little dimples and stuff. There's not much you can do to it, but there is a lot you can do to it. Curvation, with the slicing in it, with the embedded, you know, marks, you can make it look like a fish, sort of. And you really just jig it off the bottom on a drop. And then when it jigs up, it moves fast. They're like, what? What was that? And it falls down, sort of like a wounded bay fish. That's the gist of it. Now, stick baits are a pretty cool thing that I don't use much. It's really cool for when striped bass come into the river. And be like literally attacked. <laughs> Blooper reel. So what you want to do with this is something called walk the dog. And that means when you have it, you jerk it like this. Poop, poop, poop. And it will do just like this towards you. Cheek, 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 cheek. And it'll walk sideways. And each time it moves, it'll spray a little water. And if it has rattles, like this one does, it'll make sound as well. Just like the popper on the top water. Sort of like buzz bait that buzzes the water. But it moves like this. I'm not sure exactly what they see when they look up. They see something dancing on the top of the water. And if it's like striped bass, they're chasing all the herring or menhaden around. And hey, they see it, it attracts attention. They're gonna go after it. And it's a big, awesome bite on top water. It's like, wow. And sometimes they'll miss it half the time and the lure will go flying all over the place. But once they actually grab it, these big treble hooks over here, you see how big they are? They're gonna get them. So, you would think this will catch a ginormous fish only, but you'll be very surprised of small one or two pound bass that are no bigger than like double this size will attack this thing. I'm like, what are they thinking? But I've seen bass do crazy things. Go online and you might find a video at a Bass Pro Shops where a 12 pound bass tries to eat a seven pound bass and he has it halfway in his mouth. It would swim around and take for 10 minutes. And eventually a seven pound bass gets out of his mouth and escapes and then they both act like nothing happened. It's the weirdest thing. So I know that you can't go too big. Now the last thing I want to talk about, I think it's the last, no it's not. Second to last thing I want to talk about is swim baits. Now swim baits are basically crankbaits, lipless crankbaits. The difference is they're soft. It has that little patented uh, treble hook at the bottom. It has your little eye ring here to hook it on, but it moves. You see these little slats in it? Allow it to move just like this. Just like a fish right towards you. When the fish grab it, they get another key indicator with the feel that, whoa, this isn't some hard lure that I bit last time that snagged me and that fisherman let me go. Not gonna fall for that again. This time it's something soft, like, oh wait, I think I might got myself a nice meal. Then, oh no, got tricked again. So this is just another chance to, pick, to trick the fish, especially if they're knowledgeable, i.e. bigger and smarter. If fish get bigger, smarter, better eyesight, better taste, better, better memory, and it gets hard to catch them. That's why not everybody's catching large bass, except for Bill Dance. He is awesome. Now the last thing I want to talk about, so I, is a bait that I've like used recently 
after I had some success and I was like, oh my God, this is actually working now. All those years of failure. Now I'm gonna use it every time. And that is the frog, the topwater frog. So awesome. I haven't used this one yet, but you know, they're almost all the same. Kevin Van Dam, Booyah, Live Target, uh, Lunker City, Lunker, Lunker something. They all look a little different. Some look more life more lifelike, which is you know cool to look at. But from a fish's point of view, they see the bottom. And they're wondering what it is. If you can trick them, awesome. If you can't trick them, not awesome. So you want to be as lifelike as possible. And I want to be lifelike. And a frog lure can be popped, it can be slow, swimmed. You can work it many ways, except you can't work it fast. So take that into mind. But Wow, these are all the lures, all the lures that you can use. This, 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 look at all these lures. This, oh, I, I even forgot about the fluke. The fluke is another one. It's another fish imitator, it's a soft bait, kind of like a, uh, a sluggo. If you've been around fishing for a while, back in the day, that's great for, that's great for striped bass as well, as well as regular bass. We got the worm. Don't forget the worms, the crankbaits, crankbaits, you got the spinnerbaits, the new age chatterbait, in between kind of lure, and the spun baits, and the spoon, and the inline spinners. Obviously, you gotta get them all. So, take it slow, find something you like, find a brand you like that makes a bunch of stuff, or find a particular brand you like for a particular type of lure that catches bass and you know try one or two and when you try it give it some time give it a whole day like i'm not going to give up on this lure because i know it's supposed to be working right now if i work it this particular way and also stay tuned to my videos where i'll go more into depth about how to use each one of these lures it will come out eventually no it's not directly after this video but you know subscribe like go to all my social media and you know I'll be here to help you. You can comment down below if you have any questions. You can go to my website, fishnetwork.com, where I help fishermen like you with families and jobs find more time to go fishing. And there you'll find a whole set of free information and other information that you can get from my, uh, I have some free, uh, I actually have a free version of the 10 step process to go fishing at work. It's really quick, really simple, really to the point. And it will get you out here as quickly as possible as long as you take action. And I also have a online course which goes into great detail about how you can consistently go out here so you can possibly fish every day if you wanted to. So as for myself, time is running out and this video is going long. So you go out there, go fishing.